It's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Hyundai Nexo, taking us on this road trip from basically San Diego to wine country up in Northern California. There are a ton of places along the way to enjoy, but what makes this trip all the better is the good company and the good ride. I was fortunate enough to be and have good company on this trip, riding shotgun and also co-piloting with the great Michael Fisher, also known as Mr. Mobile. Quick thing to note, Hyundai did provide us this vehicle along with some of the expenses along the way, including hotel rooms and the fuel needed in order to make the trip. But with that said, I'm still providing my perspective in this mostly vlog style video on a vehicle that marks my first piece of car content on this channel. So Michael came all the way from the East Coast down to San Diego, where he started the journey. The first stop was Los Angeles, where I live, and where Hyundai wanted to give us some final information before we made the long trip. It was there that we learned a little bit more about this unique vehicle we would call our home on the road. Now here's the gist. Hydrogen in a large tank chemically reacts to oxygen that is brought in via the front intake, which is inside of the grill on the front. This energy is used to power the battery and thus the electric motor. Now that tank is huge by the way, which is one way to mitigate what is called range anxiety. Whereas other cars might not go a huge distance based upon its fuel, the fuel cell inside of the Nexo can make it go for upwards of 380 miles. And all of that while limiting emissions and helping the environment. After all, the fuel cell chemical reaction has one one simple byproduct, water. We had to keep one thing in mind though as we geared up for the first long leg of the trip. Because this is a new source of consumer fuel, hydrogen fueling stations are far less common than their gasoline counterparts. For now though, we decided to mark one of our first destinations and that was the Queen Mary in Long Beach. We took a little bit of time to appreciate the car and its looks. As an SUV, there's plenty of room not just for Michael and myself, but for potential passengers in the back seat. Room in the trunk meant that we were able to haul quite a bit of luggage and belongings without worry. And then there's all the fancy tech. The key fob that doesn't need to be inserted into the car for ignition automatically signals the door handles to come out when it is in range of the vehicle. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more in the car for the driver and the passenger to enjoy, but I'll get to all of that a little bit later. For now, we had to get fueled up before we made our first leg up to Santa Barbara. That was the point at which I would refuel the vehicle, but um... Josh has the gas card. <laughs> <sighs> Ta-da. It's my fault. It is disconcerting to be near this much pressure. All of that pressure fills up three 14-gallon tanks of hydrogen gas at 10,000 PSI. Thankfully, the fueling process takes up to five minutes, so you know exactly how long you'll have to endure all of the sounds that happen during the procedure. Oh, it's cold. Of course it's cold. Thanks to physics. Leading up to our arrival in Santa Barbara for the night, I enjoyed being the passenger to Michael's good driving. But the second day was my turn to drive, and it was the long haul from Santa Barbara to the Bay Area. I learned pretty quickly what it meant to drive what essentially amounts to an electric vehicle. I, the car I have right now is considered a performance car, so I'm, right. used, I'm used to that kind of feel. Um, this, I'm, I'm, I'm gliding. I'm gliding on the floor right now. I don't feel much. It's a, it's a nice feeling, but it's not a performance feel. Definitely not a performance feeling, no. Have you, um, are you on which regen mode are you in? Two? It looks like two. Yeah, if you switch it up to three, you'll start to feel it a little bit when you take your foot off the gas, you'll you'll feel the, the regen brakes come in. Conserving energy for the electric motor often involved a process called regenerative braking. Electric motors can also act as their own generators, converting mechanical energy during the braking process into reusable electric energy. Driving styles can dictate how efficient the energy is expended and then thus replenished, but the Nexo provides different settings that will make it brake harder when the driver's foot gets off the accelerator in an effort to restore as much power as possible. You can use it to it, you can use it to your advantage because if you're more of a tentative driver, then letting go of the accelerator slows you down. You know, you can get you can sort of pull back from the car in front of you, get a few car lengths. So I can see how that's nice because not only are you doing that, you're also getting some electricity, uh, some some uh, power back. Right. So that is kind of cool. But it also feels like every time you do that, the car's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Beautiful view all around us, my friend. We in the we on the best coast. From now on, whenever you post a IG story of it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm just gonna send Maybe you like, a link to this video. <laughs> come on back to the best coast, baby. <laughs> 
So after a short stint in Solvang and then a visit to the Hitching Post, name that movie in the comments down below, we were ready to go up to the Pacific Coast Highway and drive along the water. But it was then that we learned firsthand about one of Hydrogen Fuel's main pitfalls. So if you're going up the Pacific Coast Highway, the Highway 1, if you want to call it that, uh, there are basically no stations between Santa Barbara and San Jose. And that's a long stretch. Anybody out there who knows their California geography, that's a long, long, long stretch. It's also one of the most fun stretches, which is why it's weird that there's nowhere to refuel there for a car like this. So we're leaving Santa Barbara this morning, and I was feeling a little overconfident because as I look at the rangefinder, you know, we had probably 250 miles in the of available range in the tank, and I was like, we don't have to fuel up here, let's just go. Yeah. By the time we actually stopped and looked at the map, we can't we, we can't go the coastal route. We would have to go inland to Harris Ranch, which we didn't want to do because we wanted to take advantage of some of the daylight uh, out on the ocean to shoot this thing. Yeah. Having already refueled again back in Santa we Rosa, went, Santa, Santa, Santa Maria, Santa Claus, Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. We even went back to do that, expecting it to get us everywhere we needed to go. We're still kind of cutting it close. To the point where we had an hour have to replot and basically head inland. So it was a bummer that we wouldn't be able to do the best parts of the Pacific Coast Highway for our drive, but we still had a good seven hours to get to our next destination, which was the next fueling station. That's a lot of hours to get familiar with a car. Now the center console is a myriad of buttons and controls, which itself might present a bit of a distraction. In my case, it took a while to gain the muscle memory needed to fiddle with everything while keeping my eyes on the road. But even then, comfort is clearly a priority with the Nexo. Driving assists help keep you aware of your surroundings due to additions like the blind spot cameras and the side mirrors, and a suite of sensors that give you a bird's eye view of the car and how close it is to nearby objects. This in particular was really cool and something we always took advantage of. But comfort also meant in-cabin tech, like seat warmers and coolers. You heard me right, seat coolers. How you feel? It's odd and I like it. <laughs> well, this is like walking in like snowy, snowy New York and being like, I gotta sit down. Yes, <laughs> but you're in a snowsuit, so you don't, the moisture doesn't come through, but you're sitting on cold snow. Yeah, it's like, that's exactly what it is. You're right. Sitting down on that or like a cold bench or something like that, it's, it's, it's interesting. It was pretty good. And as far as infotainment was concerned, the built-in dash system was robust and feature-packed, with Hyundai's own nav providing info on our most important destinations. Fueling stations, of course. But for all other use, the center console was used mainly with Android Auto. We're out of the, we're out of the woods. We're out of the woods. We are out of the woods. What do we have left in the tank? 30, 30 miles? 34? We had 34 miles left, yeah. So, A little tighter than I like to get. <laughs> the light turned on. Which means we were definitely like nearing our last legs. So if you're any, if you're that kind of driver or that you're waiting for the light to turn on before you go to a fuel station to put gas in your car, that's pretty much what we did. So a quick jaunt down the Golden Gate Bridge, some wonderful shots out there, and we find ourselves in Sausalito. Sausalito and the greater San Francisco area treated us really well, but one thing was for certain, the Nexo was really treating us well during these long legs of the trip. The Nexo may not be a performance car, but it prioritizes a smooth ride and an enjoyable ride for both driver and passengers. We haven't introduced Russell. We, we just have a stranger in the back seat. Oh, that's true. We hey, just Russell. picked up this hobo on the <laughs> yeah. side of the street. I am also here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Russell Holly from Android Central and other mobile nation sites. He's the greatest. I've actually been here the whole time. You just didn't see him. He was sleeping. <laughs> in the um, ample uh, trunk space. The trunk is very spacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed it is. Thankfully, the next main destination was Sacramento, which was only about a couple of hours away from where we were to begin with. So it's an easy drive to get to Sacramento and plot out the rest of our journey, which was when we ran into our next big issue. But thankfully, it had nothing to do with hydrogen fuel or even with the car itself. It was just us against the elements. 
Clearly the trip up until now has been really eventful. It's been really awesome and not just because it's given Michael and myself a, a chance to like spend a lot of time together and you couldn't ask for a better way to do that than on a road trip. Now as you might be able to see right now it is raining like crazy outside but that also means that there's a storm brewing not only here but pretty much all throughout California and in Tahoe where we were supposed to end this journey or at least that was one of our destinations it is snowing now and it's a little bit dangerous to do those roads with a two-wheel drive car without chains on the tires. We were literally told by people we know in those areas that it's probably not the safest thing to do. So those are considerations that you have to have for a car like this. Uh, yes, there are going to be some issues finding hydrogen stations, but it also may or may not be equipped for every single type of terrain or weather situation. So Michael is checking right now where we might be able to go instead of up into the mountains, and we're probably gonna end up staying around the San Francisco area where it's still raining, but it's not going to be quite as harrowing as if we went up to the mountains. I gotta say though, even if you do find yourself in weather conditions like this, you couldn't really ask for a better cabin experience. I mean, there's so many bells and whistles and there's a real comfort in this car uh, that just makes it easier to brave the elements. And that's exactly what we've been doing. We've already run outside when it's really raining out and we've gotten drenched <laughs> by the downpour. And I imagine that we would have some fun in the snow, but we are able to take refuge inside of the Nexo pretty well. So we decided to make the best of our last day with the Nexo by spending even more time in it. And we decided to stay in an area that is not only picturesque, but also provides some great driving roads for us to enjoy the car. And that would be wine country. Driving through the winding roads of the vineyards was already a joy compared to the kind of trouble we think we would have gotten into if we tried to get through the deep snow up in Lake Tahoe during that winter storm. And of course, because we decided to stick around in Napa, Sonoma, we did indulge a little bit and we toasted to the fact that despite some of the detours that we had to make, it has been such a successful trip so far. Sip toast. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, to appease the nerds in us, we did think of one final destination before we got back to Sacramento to drop the car off and bid it farewell. You can see behind me the highway or the, the road going through all of these vineyards. Michael and I here have officially done the unsafest thing we've done this entire trip, and that's walk along this entire path with no protection from this high-speed highway to get to that. This is the location that was rendered as the background, the default background for Windows XP. And with that, we made the final leg of our trip. One more stop in Sacramento where we would drop the car off and then Michael Fisher and I would go our separate ways. We spent a number of days in the Hyundai Nexo. And after all of that time and hours and hours spent on the road together, we did not want to kill each other at any point during the trip. Now, most of the credit goes to our friendship, but I'll give a little bit of the credit to the comfort of the Hyundai Nexo. But all of the things that make the Hyundai Nexo such a great place to sit in for hours on end are also things you can find on plenty of other vehicles that have the same size and the same price point. But what makes the Nexo a more premium version of an SUV is of course its alternative fuel. And that hydrogen tank does come with a few caveats. You saw them in this vlog. We went about 900 miles with this car, fueling up about four times. But unfortunately, because of the way that all of these stations are peppered throughout California, it meant that we had to cater our journey to where those were located. So clearly the Nexo is capable of performing the road trip scenario. I mean, Michael and I are that example. However, the Nexo is probably best suited for those people who are in more urban areas, places where the hydrogen fueling stations are more abundant. And despite all of the luxury the Hyundai Nexo provides its passengers, one luxury that hydrogen tanks don't have is the ability to just stop over on the corner and get fueled up quickly. If you do want to have a car like this with all of its features and you want to be on the cutting edge, 
of alternative fuel, then you can get the Hyundai Nexo for somewhere between $59,000 and $63,000 depending on the trim. But obviously the main takeaway here is that we were able to have this journey together, Michael Fisher and I, and we were already bros before this and just continues after this amount of time that we had spent together. So if you want to see his video on the Hyundai Nexo where he does more of an in-depth review on the car, make sure you go check it out over at Mr. Mobile. You can find the link in the description down below or it should be appearing right now. Thank you so much for watching my side of this story and I would love to do more car content in the future. So make sure you stay tuned so that if I have that opportunity you can see it here on my channel uh, make sure you subscribe to it so you can keep up with everything that i'm doing drop some likes on the videos and get into the comment sections and let me know what you think about hydrogen powered vehicles from there though you can look forward to my next video and until then i'm just going to remind you to enjoy your tea everybody